Um, today we're going to be talking about responsive content. It's a conversation. If you any time just interrupt and ask a question. Um, I'm a front end developer. I've been thinking a lot about um, staying away from that speaker while I have a microphone in my hand. Um, and thinking about responsive design um, from the front end, but there's uh, there's some really big implications for the back end as well. And uh, uh, I know the theme system really well. I, at DrupalCon San Francisco, I gave a conversation, a core conversation about the render API and and how complex it is, and you know what are we really doing here? And it was a bit hand wavy because I didn't actually know what was problem was. Um, but uh, today we're going to be talking about you know mobile. It's going to tie into WYSIWYG, uh, render API, uh, design patterns, semantics, HTML5. I think maybe I've listed everything that actually Drupal does. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, that's a fantastic slide. Oh, right, OK. So what are some awesome things that you love? <laughs> Chocolate and peanut butter, peanut butter cups. I love them together. They're they're fantastic. Um, ponies and unicorns. Pony corns. Who doesn't love pony corns? <clears throat> um, the same thing is true about responsive layouts and responsive content. Right? They really go together quite well. Um, and Drupal's uh, layout system um, makes it really easy to do responsive layouts. Right? So you've got different regions on your TPL. All you need to do is apply some CSS, basically. Basically, right? Um, and you can have your regions sort of rearrange themselves. I think a lot of you are actually back-end developers. Does it, does it, is there anybody who's not familiar with this, this front-end concept of responsive web design? Because I could show uh, another slide that shows what responsive web design means. Or did everybody? I don't know uh, the term. You don't know responsive web design? Okay. I, I understand what you're saying, but I didn't know the term. Right. So let me, let me actually show you a slide that I gave at... Uh, at 10:45, and make it really obvious what's going on. What I mean, what I mean by responsive design. Um, so this is a responsive website, Hicks Design, and as the size of your browser changes, and you know, like different devices obviously have their own intrinsic width, you can see that the layout changes depending on what the width of your device is or what the width of your window is on your desktop. Um, and this is a single source. There's no JavaScript. It's just HTML, um, CSS3 media queries, and some, you know, some extra sort of CSS stuff. Um, and here we're going to zoom out again. You see this is the mobile design, which is just a single column. And then as things are wider in your device, uh, different things rearrange so they fit into the context of your device. This is what responsive design is all about. And um, Drupal, Drupal is great about this. And you can do this right now without any problems, without any changes to the back end of Drupal, um, which is uh, fantastic. That's what I talked about at 1045. Um, and uh, well, let's go back to the other slides now. So, um, Pony corn. It's okay. There we go. Oh, that's going too far. That's too much back. Yeah, okay. So, um, another thing that's possible, and um, front end developers are figuring this out, and again, we don't need back end changes for this, but you can have like a, a node that has a whole bunch of fields on it with like, for example, you can create responsive panel layouts. Um, so basically, uh, you have a single source panel, HTML inside panels. Um, and uh, you can add fields into this, sec this pane and the other fields into this pane and have the actual content be responsive in the same way that the regions and you know, block regions in your page TPL can be responsive. So this is something that we actually just did at Palantir.net uh, last week and we haven't quite launched the site. It's going to probably launch this week. And it's using responsive panel layouts um, to, to do content. And this works great with fielded nodes. Really, really great. The problem is, and I'm sorry I'm whispering, I totally killed my voice in my first session. <laughs> but the problem is, is that there's a lot of sites that use the basic page content type. 
And the reason why they do this is because they have, you know, pages that they're not, they're not repeatable, right? It's not like you have another page which has the exact same structure, right? So you can't use fields because if you created a content type just for that page, you would never use it. You'd have like one node and you could do that. Some people do that for homepage, yeah. Add, adding fields to a single like node or a single entity, right? Right. Sure. Yeah. Um, that might be a good solution. I, I don't know. Um, uh, but right now, basically, the basic page content type is it's a it's a single it's a single big text field, right? That's the body field, and we always stick WYSIWYG editors on there, and like maybe you have like insert module or media module or whatever. So you're just dumping stuff into there, and it ends up being hard coded HTML inside your content, right? And so how do you it you can basically add some hard-coded HTML to do very specific responsive designs if you want to, but it feels like Drupal should have a way to make it easier rather than hard-coding HTML into the, what happens when you redesign the site, right? So we have to redesign all of these pages. Kinda, kinda stinks, right? So, uh, one idea that I had was, how many different slides have I got here? Bring it up better. Oh, I totally skipped a slide here. How did I do that? Ah, yeah, that's why. Let's bring it back to render API. So I really, I, I'm both frustrated by render API and I love it, right? Because Drupal 7 is super powerful. I can do crazy things because I'm probably one of the few people who knows the whole system inside and out, right? Which is great for me. Not so great for everybody else, but, um, but uh, render API is, it's kind of like moonwalking. <laughs> um, in that it's, it's very cool, you know, it helps you get dates, <laughs> um, and it's a really powerful dance move. You know. <laughs> um, but I, I can never tell whether or not Render API itself, is it propelling Drupal in the right direction? Uh, <laughs> I, are we actually going in the right direction? We're just sort of tweaked the wrong you know, way, so we're not actually looking where we're going, or are we facing where we should be going and headed the opposite direction, right? So at San Francisco, I sort of just talked about the complexity of the system and the difficulty in making it work, and, and the thing is, is that the reason why we have Render API in Drupal 7 is because we are lazy programmers, which, which is a virtue, right? We're lazy programmers. We needed a way to have add more power to the Drupal 7 theme system. And we had this form API, which did a bunch of similar things. So why not reuse that code and sort of expand it and make it render API? And that's how we got Drupal 7, really. But that's because we were being lazy and just reusing code. But we didn't actually have any design goals of what are we trying to do with the system. Um, and and I think I think the end result really shows those lack of design goals. Um, and when I started talking about responsive design, design to think that, bring this all back, I started to realize um, what my actual issues were with, with Render API, which is that there's no design goals. What I, what I sort of imagined is like, wouldn't it be great if we had like, like a WYSIWYG editor for this you know, text area for our basic page and you got to select like design patterns, like I need um, this um, images and then like a description next to it. I need that pattern where it has like three of those images and text and then you know maybe the image and the text are sort of rotating back and forth. And so you like select that design pattern, stick it into the spot there and then fill out the content, right? And it's the, the design pattern itself is responsive, right? So that um, as you're going to different 
different devices, it knows um, it can respond in the usual way, right? But the thing is, is that even even just that still gets it gets us towards hard coded HTML. And the thing is, is that we can should be able to get the data out of that design pattern without necessarily forcing all of that HTML down of that design pattern for like mobile device or sorry mobile apps that just need the data, right? Do we have to throw the entire HTML stuff down at the mobile apps in order just for them to sort of glean this information? Like the DrupalCon app just gets data, right? So how do we get this information? And, and none, the, the DrupalCon apps are great because they're working on fielded nodes, right? There, aren't, there are no basic pages from the DrupalCon site that are in the mobile app, or like maybe just a couple. But those, those have been sort of added very specifically. Um, so, if we could have this, have some way for, well, here, here we go. How do we, how do we make the actual DrupalCon, the content responsive? Um, yeah, let, let the theme system convert uh, the, the semantic content, understand the underlying idea of the, what is the content that I'm sticking into this basic page and convert it into render marker for whatever I happen to need. If I need it for a website, fine. If I need it for a mobile app, fine. Any kind of you know, device that we need. I know that Greg Dunlap, who's not here right now, or at least he wasn't here, is working on, on, on this, you know, this problem of, of Drupal needing to output all these different kinds of content and not just HTML, right? And our, our content from the basic page should be able to do that too. So um, maybe, and I'm just throwing out ideas here. I want to have a conversation and have people sort of throw this stuff around. Is HTML5 have enough semanticness inside it that it could be used as a sort of a general container and converter of, of you know, understanding the semantic nature of our page to be able to convert it into these different formats? Do we need to have microdata, microformats, RDFA, whatever? I don't know. Um, but we need to, Drupal needs to understand the semantics of what's inside what is essentially just a giant text field that we ignore right now. Um, JSON is a loose semantic structure. I don't know. This was something that was that uh, was recently thrown out for the formatting of the um, yeah yeah the, the one with XML instead of JSON for but. The, Again, I'm just throwing out ideas right here. Uh, please, God, not at XSLT. Um, <laughs> this, I mean, that's what XLT is basically for. But I just, I just feel like this. It's never worked very well before. Maybe we can figure out how to make it work again. But anyway, that's my comment. Um, and then, like Element Info API. Like there's a there's a right now in Drupal seven there's an Element Info API that talks about um, different things, right? So you, you, in the render API, you, you specify that like this is a list, right? And there's, there's, a, there's a whole like API that specifies when you see that this is a list, you render it this way, right? And the thing is that right now, the element info API is very hard coded to, I mean, it's flexible, but it's hard coded to HTML output, right? And it's, not thinking about things in a semantic way at all. It's just like, we've got lists, uh, I, don't, I don't know what this means. We have an HTML tag element info right now. <laughs> Which is just, I understand the need for it, but it's not semantic at all, right? That's the end of my slideshow, apparently. I have no more slides. <laughs> so, um, this is when I wanted to get started talking about, and I, I don't, I don't have good answers, I just have a whole bunch of questions. So, have I like blown your mind or are you bored? <laughs> Anybody? Right. Okay. So the thing is, is that if, if Drupal doesn't understand and 
Oh yeah, sorry. The, so the question is, he didn't understand uh, what response of. Um, it, Right. Was, you, you didn't understand how, how responsive tied in with, with semantic exactly. Um, and the thing is, is that re responsive is that responsive design is basically, is basically a, just a layout technique, right? There's nothing in it that inherently about semantics. You're right. Um, but the thing is, is that if we understand the semantics of our actual content in ways that we don't right now, except, like I said, for field of nodes, we're in good shape. We can add some sort of thin semantic layer on top of that and be rocking and rolling. Basic page, we don't know anything about it. It's just a big blob that we they ignore. And if we understood the semantics of it, we could transform it in responsive ways, not, not at CSS ways, but at, at the code level, back end level, so we can transform it into these different things that we can't do right now. Right now it's just a big blob of HTML. Right. Um, let's see if I have. Um, so, so the the you basically didn't understand how a content could be responsive, no, I was or saying, I, was, I was wondering how necessary it is to be able to be responsive in the main uh, page area of you know, assuming it, that it's that the HTML is not. It actually, how necessary is it to, to have the actual content be responsive? And is the basically the more complex the content type is the more necessary it is for it to be responsive, right? So, um, and, and then it's because you just, it, a lot of times when you have these complex content types, you're already doing like fun things in the, in the node TPL or whatever, and moving different, different uh, fields around and stuff into different wrappers, right? So you're starting the process of, of making nodes sort of responsive in that, um, and, and that, that's, that's only possible by hard coding the HTML for basic page content types. We can do it with the field of links, but so it, it really is, uh, Palantir.net, we were working on a site, or our own site, to make it responsive, and it's almost all content that's being made responsive, rather than, um, you know, just like blocks and regions, right? And so, designers are absolutely gonna need, need this, and the thing is that I think that we'll need this same idea for outputting to different, different things besides HTML. Sorry? What about using context? Context, yeah, I mean, yeah, um, de definitely. I mean, uh, Drupal 8, so we're, we're working on adding a context system into Drupal 8. That's absolutely required for this, right? Oh, whoops. This. Um, uh, Mark, Larry. I'm going to repeat the question for the video. Um, so the, the idea is there's a usability issue with you know, when we're abstracting sort of the WYSIWYG, basically, right? So instead of just like making things bold or italics or shifting off to the left or right, we have to think about, um, you know, se semanticness about this. And the thing is, is that um, inside these, you know, responsive design patterns, you can have semantics embedded in them and say that you need to you know, or, or have a configuration maybe for, so you can say that these are the semantics of the content that you're going to be putting into this design pattern. And yes, there's going to be a usability problem because you're going to make it more complex, but you're also going to make it easier if you have a, a good enough design pattern library, you're going to make it easier for them to actually create pages because they're not having to do all of it by hand, right? Because like basically you, when you have like complex HTML that you want to stick into the basic page, 
uh, you turn off the WYSIWYG editor and you start typing your HTML, right? So. How's it? Um, only in that I think that we should we should we should store um, the semantic knowledge of the content alongside any HTML that we're get adding, right? So that we can understand at the same time. This is the semantics of it, and this is the HTML that's sort of on top, maybe. And when you're editing, you're editing sort of both layers at the same time, right? And but it's 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 seem, seamless from the user. They're not editing sort of both layers, but but Drupal understands both these the semantic understanding and the actual HTML, or not, actually it doesn't understand the HTML very much, but it would understand the semantics a lot better uh, in, the, in the front there. I'm just thinking about the next session that's coming up about data, uh, the Darwinian information architectural typing, and it also uses um, semantic uh, information about the content and puts it together and arranges content. And what what time is that session? That's right up in 10 minutes. Oh, okay. So there's another session right after this. If you're watching the video, watch the one that comes after. I don't know. Find it. What's the name of the <laughs> session? Well, it's about data and help and stuff. The next one. Data and help. Dita. Dita. Okay. So look for the video on Dita because it has some related information. Yeah, Excellent. So So yeah, so the so uh, the suggestion is that use the the, the documentation data uh, semantics and and sort of uh, leverage that inside the responsive um, context. Yeah, uh, Lynn. Um, I I actually like to second what Larry says about is that it might add a bit of complexity to the content that you're writing because you're writing it in the context of a data set and you're writing and um, I've talked to the people that have developed it and they say that it's actually, it, it does provide um, just enough of a burden that people don't end up adopting it. Mm, okay. um, so it, it would really require looking at how we're changing the user interface mm -hmm. a lot. I think. Yeah. So, so Lynn Clark was seconding what Larry said about adding complexity and there's an actual example of, uh, was it media? Semantic semantic media wiki where they're actually doing something very similar to this and it adds just enough of a burden that it and make people don't adopt it and the thing is that wissy wigs in general have that same burden though right because as soon as you want to do anything reasonably complex you turn off the wissy wig and then you write it by hand so we, we i do, but not everybody does. well yeah okay right right oh yeah yeah. Um, and I, so they might start using hacks for the semantics as well. Yeah. Like, I want it to be bold, so I'll say that it's this important semantic thing. Right. Yeah. Know. Yeah. And it's it's not an easy easy pro or easy problem. Um, but I, you know, I think, and I don't think we should build like a system our own. I definitely, you know, investigate stuff and figure out what problems it, and avoid the problems, or maybe improve on them, make them better. I don't know. Um, I just want to start the conversation, so, yeah. So is this dovetail with the kind of stuff that people are trying to do with field information, where they're trying to make it so that it's not as structured? Because, like you were saying, that the field system has, could have very good semantics. So if they're moving towards, if you're moving towards having unstructured data storage mm -hmm. abilities, then couldn't you just be like, oh, I'm adding a field to this node? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, so the question was, well, does it tie into this other idea of, of making um, fields um, so that you could like maybe just apply some fields to some nodes as an alternative to what we can currently do? Um, yeah. So the the thing is, is the basic page. It's not that it's un. We're treating it as unstructured data because we're ignoring it. Basically, it's just this big blob, right? But it actually has structure, right? 
and I want us to be able to understand its structure. So yeah, it absolutely ties into that, I, I think. If we, if we could have like, you know, at, if we're adding fields in, into this blob, right? We should be able to track that, that it is a, this type of field, right? We don't want to just lose it as rendered HTML because the, the insert module I, I quite like, but that's basically the way it works right now is you, you, you insert an image field into the body type and as soon as you do that, it's lost. I mean, it's, like, it's just rendered HTML and it's, it never knows that it's a field again. Yeah. So, so the, uh, the there are two things here when you understand the semantics, right? So the there it allows a lot of different backend things that are not possible, um, and then of course the you know the, the the theme the presentation layer right has to understand that as well. And the, the thing is is that it, it it's going to get some from the backend. It's going to get some rendered HTML. Maybe it'll get different. HTML depending on what kind of mobile device it is or whatever, but it still has to understand that. But it understands it in the normal way that it's always understood it. It's a HTML, I'm adding some CSS, you know, we, we've got field wrappers right now. This is very similar to things right now. Right. Now, I, I talked about that. So the, there's a problem with responsive design that I absolutely agree with. Is that when you when you have these flexible f flexible columns um, and the flexible images, what you're actually doing is actually downloading a big image and then rescaling it to be small. This is not particularly performant, <laughs> to put it nicely. <laughs> Well, right, but this, some browsers do a much better job of resizing. Surprise, IE, you know, older versions of IE don't. Or actually, no, wait, it's, it's not even old versions of IE. It's tied to older versions of Windows do crap jobs of resizing images. So if you're on, like, Windows XP, I think, your images will look like crap no matter what browser you're using, and that's OS dependent. Um, Right, and and they're, they're, we're we're trying to figure out on the front end with with some you know contrib modules how do we do this so we're not hitting this double whammy of downloading an image that's too big and then also causing the mobile device to have to resize it, you know that's two hits against performance. We would like to avoid that, but we're trying to figure that out, and we don't. But that that's related, but not really the same thing. So instead of so you have a direct link to an image, you'd always pass it through a handle, which is it to whatever you want. So yeah. Kind of yeah. It's an easy problem. Actually, I'm, we're going to have a, a boff about that. We'll, that we'll talk about this, I'm sure, because it's a big issue. At like 3:45, I think this is going to be talking about responsive design in general. Um, it, it's. I, I would love to talk for another like hour and a half, but it's 1:30. And I gotta, I gotta let uh, end this. Uh, thank you very much. I, uh, I would love to talk more about this. If anybody wants to talk more about, it, just find me, and and we'll talk. And uh, yeah, thank you.